Wouldn't it be great if you could engage some sort of system that would smoothly get your youth to move through their day? Something that would get them to follow directions, line up, keep their hands to themselves, shift from one emotion to another, from one behavior to another, and all the things we need them to do to get them and us through our day smoothly. And wouldn't it be even better if that system got those youth to respond in a fraction of a second with just the slightest gesture or movement or noise from you? There is. Your youth's dopaminergic system can do all that and more, but there's a catch. Their dopaminergic system is built to get them safely and efficiently through their day based on their experience, not your day and not your experience. The trick is joining with their dopaminergic system rather than trying to force them to work against their own biology. I'm Kelly Rhodes with Body and Behavior Institute. Literally thousands of dopaminergic cues prompt the youth in your milieu during your shift. Most dopaminergic cues are the same or similar for the youth in your milieu. Humans have a whole bunch of these dopaminergic cues in common. But the magic is in the details. Dopaminergic cues are unique to the individual's lived experience. The youth we work with have had lots of experiences that are the same or similar as mainstream youth. But they've also had a lot of experiences, especially relevant to their survival, that are very different from their mainstream peers. So their systems, including their dopaminergic system, might have picked up totally different cues from their environment, which means events that for most of society are routine daily events without consequence may have had profound consequences for youth in treatment. The increase or decrease in voice volume of someone in their environment might have preceded the death of a parent or sibling or friend. Specific sights, odors or sensations, a specific loud noise or someone bolting into their living area might have happened just before a forced eviction when they lost their home, their bed, important personal items, neighborhood friends, or their parents were forced to leave precious family heirlooms behind. The tiny, nuanced sequences of facial muscle contractions, not consciously perceived, that preceded beatings or gunfire. The subtle bodily contractions, slight straightening of the back, the shifting of the weight, that are the tiny beginnings of frenetic movement in their living area that happened just before violence. These very subtle cues that your dopaminergic system hasn't learned to detect direct that youth to be vigilant or run or hide or yell or fight. These aren't decisions as we've come to think of decisions. They aren't thinking errors. They aren't maladaptive. The vigilance, fear, and fight are biological directives specific to that youth's lived experience. They're the blueprint of the miraculous learned responses that kept that youth alive during events that most of us cannot fathom. Far from being an annoyance, your youth's deviances in dopaminergic tracking and responding is something to celebrate. It's their superpower. It's the reason they're alive standing in front of you. Working therapeutically with youth in corrections requires a basic understanding of common dopaminergic processes and learning your youth's unique dopaminergic cues. Basic dopaminergic processes include reward prediction error, temporal difference learning, reinforcers, higher order conditioning, conditioned inhibition, and unexpected reward. I put links to these videos in the description. 
Dopamine plays such an important role in learning and behavior, including what we think of as decision-making, that researchers around the world study it. This is my dopaminergic researcher starting lineup. Wolfram Schultz, Philip Tobler, they often work together, Yael Niv, Anthony Dickinson, these two are a part of the uh, Fellowship of the Royal Society with Einstein and, and Newton. Uh, Kenneth Kashida, Peter Diane, Paul Glimsher, uh, Reed Montague, Greg, Gregory Burns, so many people study this. Top researchers and national scientific research funders invest in dopamine research because the dopaminergic system is so important in understanding human behaviors. We're the field tasked with helping youth with their behaviors. A basic understanding of dopaminergic processes has to be front and center in our staff training. These videos will get you started. I'm Kelly with Body and Behavior Institute. If you found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.